An entitled Karen freaks out on a veteran of war in the middle of a supermarket, all because he wouldn't let her stupid kid play with his service dog. And this Karen's entitlement is absolutely baffling. Here's what happened. So this incident occurred yesterday at the grocery store while my partner was shopping. This is actually a challenging task for him. He doesn't like all the aisles and all the people in the stores, and he doesn't like that he feels distracted from paying attention to his surroundings by needing to concentrate on the list of items that he needs. Because he is hard of hearing, he also can't easily hear where people are, and this is hard for him. Also, it's worth noting that he has extra trouble hearing high-pitched sounds, like kids or women's voices. During the COVID lockdown, he lost a lot of progress that he made with his anxiety, but he's working on getting back to where he was. He has a service dog now, which has helped him immensely, not just in public. He sleeps better now, and the dog will alert him when he is becoming anxious based on his behaviors and can help him calm down. It's really incredible. The dog has a vest, and if you read it, you would see that it has a patch that says PTSD service dog. Do not distract. Another patch says hard of hearing handler. His dog is trained to guard him from people and to alert him what side he's being approached from. This is not aggressive. The dog just uses its body to block him off and touches his leg while doing it so he knows someone is there. So he turns and saw this little kid looking up at him. He just told her the dog is working and she cannot pet him on the assumption that she had just asked him that. In response, the kid just holds out her hand for the dog to sniff and said, Mommy says I can if I say hello first or something along those lines. The dog doesn't react much at all, so the kid just starts hugging him. At this point, my partner stepped abruptly away from her and told her she needs to stop and to go find her parent. Now, he couldn't tell if the kid was old enough to read, but he's not really mad at the kid because a parent should be responsible for her in a store. And while I'm sure he was probably very stern with her, since he's not very great with people, especially kids, even on a good day, he's also not someone who yells. Yet, lo and behold, the child's mother appears and is apparently telling him off to not yell at a little girl and that apparently he made her cry as well as a bunch of other garbage. He is only catching about 30% of what she is saying. He told her he has a service dog and she needs to keep a better handle on her kid, literally pointing and saying just read the vest. The lady then rolls her eyes at him and continue to berate him. The entire time he was just standing there largely ignoring her, thinking that if she just says whatever she wants to say, she'll go and leave him alone. But then this entitled Karen did something absolutely unexpected and so unbelievably rude. We are still baffled that she actually did this. She brings up her hand and snaps in my partner's face and asks him, are you stupid or something? Thankfully there was a couple shopping who must have overheard all that was going on. The woman from this couple came and moved that woman out of my partner's face and looked like she was chewing her out until the Karen left the aisle. The man from the couple asked my partner if he was alright and he turned out to be a veteran too. And after this experience, I'm honestly still so livid about it and we really hope that something like this doesn't happen again. What a horrible entitled Karen. Not only are you neglectful of your child, you also encourage your kid to go up to a strange dog that you don't even know. Like, literally, that dog could have bit that kid, and something really terrible could have happened. But instead, you just let it happen. I mean, how awful are you? And that doesn't even address the giant elephant in the room, and that's how this entitled Karen treated this veteran. I mean, this is so unbelievably gross. She snapped her hand in this guy's face, screaming at him because he's trying to get her stupid kid away from his dog. I mean, all around, just absolutely disgusting. Thankfully, there were some good Samaritans right around the corner, ready to mitigate the situation. It's also really really unfortunate because I've read many, many stories at this point of people just disrespecting service dogs as well as the people who have them. It's honestly just so disturbing to me. Like, why can't you just leave these people alone? They're just trying to live their lives like anybody else and leave the dog alone. That dog is working. Leave it alone. When will these people learn? Like, it's so infuriating. So hopefully for the sake of the original poster, they never have to deal with anything like this ever again because the way they got treated was completely unfair. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. My boyfriend wants me to move across the country with him, and now my mom is freaking out, and everyone is mad at me, and now I don't know what to do. My boyfriend and I have been together and serious for about one year. My family was apprehensive about me dating him at first, but they were eventually fine with it, and seemed to like him, or just didn't tell me they didn't like him. I moved out of my parents' house a couple of weeks ago, and I officially moved in with my 
boyfriend. I know my mother wasn't big on me moving out, but didn't say much to me. He got a job offer across the country. He is a professor, but he was never my professor, if that makes sense. We haven't definitively decided on anything yet. He hasn't decided to take the job, but is probably going to, and wants me to come with him. And honestly, we are both leaning towards doing it. It is about a 24-hour car ride and closer to some of his family. I talked to my brother and sister about it casually, but neither of them had much of an opinion about it. I'm not sure who told my mom. They both deny it. But she called me crying yesterday when she found out the news. She told me it would end badly and told me not to go and that I should actually break up with him. She said a bunch of terrible things about him. I tried to get her to calm down and ask what she was talking about. She told me this was a bad idea and a bad relationship. She told me if I do move, then I can't move back in with her, which is honestly fine. This phone call upset me and I just told her I would talk to her later. I told my boyfriend about this and he got really upset. He, like me, think family being on the fence about relationships in the beginning was pretty understandable. But I think by this point, he has definitely proven himself to an extent. My boyfriend's attitude now is basically saying, screw my family. He is getting upset with me for being passive aggressive, for talking and texting anyone in my family, even though it is really just my mom that's texting me. I don't really understand what the big deal is either. If it does end badly, I can always come back. I don't understand what they are so worried about. He loves me a lot. I'm not angry at my mother. I just don't like the situation. I want to be understanding with my family, but at the same time, my boyfriend is my priority. I don't know what the right amount of sticking up for my boyfriend would look like without disowning my family. My brother and sister's advice is that I should just do it and that she will eventually just get over it. My dad fully supports my mom and agrees with her. Now at this point, everybody's upset with me and I don't know what the right thing is to do in this situation. What should I do? In my opinion, there are a few red flags here that I just spotted. For one, your boyfriend's getting upset about you texting your family and he's basically saying, oh, well, screw your family. Also, another red flag here, the boyfriend in this story is 31 years old and the girlfriend is 22 years old. That is a big age difference in my opinion and it seems like that's probably what your parents are worried about. Not only are you dating somebody significantly older than you, but you're also about to move across the country with them. And sure, you said it best. You do love your boyfriend and you really do appreciate him and your priority is him, which is great. That's exactly how it should be. But exercising some caution and really weighing your options would not be a bad idea in this situation. At the end of the day, it's up to you what you want to do and not your mom, your dad, or anybody else in your family is going to make that decision for you. And on that note, it's really terrible that your mom would basically give you an ultimatum. She's basically saying if you move out there, you can never come back, which is not fair for you in the slightest. You would think that if things went belly up, she would at least be there for you and say, of course you can come back. So if you do decide to go, just know that this probably will create some kind of rift between you and your family. And I think either way, you just need to be ready for that. My boyfriend has been secretly spending $10,000 on a video game on his phone, and I'm blown away and I don't know what to do. So I've been with my boyfriend for nearly nine months now, and just last week, I found a bunch of scandalous anime apps, if you know what I mean, on his phone while he was scrolling. I asked him about this, and he immediately attempted to delete the apps, but I stopped him and asked him to explain to me what they were. He said that they were games, and he spent money on them. I asked him how much money exactly, and he told me about $3,000. I then wanted to see his payment history on his Gmail account, and there I saw he had actually spent well over $12,000 over the course of three years, most of which was spent this year while he was with me. Last month alone, he nearly spent $700, and he only earns about $2,500 a month. Plus, he pays rent, which is about $800 a month. He admitted that in these games, he was married to a virtual anime character, and he dressed them in very scandalous clothing. Look, I've never understood the whole anime thing. It's not really my thing. But what upsets me in this situation is the financial side of things. I cannot understand for the life of me why anyone would spend this much on games, especially virtual clothes for cartoon characters. He can't even save for a loan on a car or a house that he keeps saying he wants in the near future. I sat him down with his mother and we talked about this in great detail. Apparently his mother had confronted him about his spending problem a year ago and this was well before we even met. So this is proof that he hasn't changed at all. He admitted to having a spending problem and will be seeking help, a psychologist of some kind, just to try and understand why he's doing this and how to stop. This has made me second guess our relationship and his ability to save for things in the future. I know we've only 
only been together for a short time, but it's things like this that can ruin something really great. Aside from his spending problem, he is genuinely a fantastic guy who treats me wonderfully. Is it worth the effort at this point? If his mother already had this problem with him before we met, and we are having this same issue now, is he actually ever going to change? Should I stay if he improves? Or is he a lost cause at this point? What should I do? This definitely sounds like it's some kind of addiction. I mean, the way he's just spending money so willingly, well over $10,000 at this point, on a video game at that, on his phone of all things, is really disturbing to me. So I think your concerns are completely justified. But it really begs the question, what kind of partner are you looking for? Because I think what you're identifying right now is something you really do want to know early on. Can he even save money? Does he have the ability to put money aside for the things that matter the most? And it sounds like right now he really doesn't. And he's had this problem since before you guys have been together. This really would have been something that you would have liked to know probably well before you started dating. But at least there's some kind of silver lining here. It sounds like he really does want to change. And hopefully with some help, he can learn how to manage his money better and be a better boyfriend overall. Because that's a lot of money to spend on a video game when he could have been using that money to further his life and his career. An entitled driver and his friends zigzag all over the road and repeatedly honk the horn at me and my mom. And after we honk the horn telling them to get out of the way, they accidentally drive into traffic and get in an accident. And at this point, we're not sure if we're to blame for their accident. So I had just finished my eight hour shift and I had just wanted to go home and de-stress. But my mom had to go to our uncle's house to pick up some stuff for our grandma and had text our mom to come and pick it up from his house. So we're on our way to their house and these guys in a smaller car are actively zigzagging all across the road right behind us and repeatedly honking the horn at us. They even came close enough to try and rear end us. And this is something that happened to my mom when she was pregnant with our youngest brother. Eventually, they pulled up right next to us and I turn and give them a glare. The driver was a middle-aged man and the other two was maybe two college-age students. From what I recall, they laughed at us before speeding in front of us and then proceed to brake check us several times. My mom clearly was not impressed by this and slows down to prevent them from hitting us. But they just kept at it. And by this point, we were just a few blocks away from my uncle's house. These idiots stopped at the light just before the turn off. And I just sat there. And even after the light had turned green, I remember seeing the college guys looking back at us still laughing. I was about to flip them the bird because one of them did flip us off while yelling all kinds of Asian slurs at us out the window. So our mom honks her horn at them and then the driver, I guess startled but not paying attention to the traffic light, hits the gas before quickly taking the turn off. And this was just as the light had switched to red and unfortunately they didn't see the other car already coming in their direction. Suddenly their bumper as well as the left rear light got clipped by another car and they spun out a bit before coming to a stop after climbing the curb of the sidewalk and the other car's front light headlight was busted. My mom and I were just sitting there shocked by what we were witnessing. Then I see some bystanders that were hanging out at the park nearby. They come jogging over to check on the idiots who were just as shocked as we were. Then I saw a car pull up next to us and turn to check on those idiots. I didn't realize until my mom pointed out that it was the car that clipped the idiot's car. The bystanders helped these idiots out of their damaged car and onto the sidewalk. My mom didn't wait and just left to get to our uncle's house. Once she reached the turnoff, one of the drivers screamed at my mom, Hey, why did you honk at me? My mom just repeatedly kept saying out loud it was their fault for not paying attention to the road and they kept messing with us. I had every right to honk at them, especially when the light was green and they were just sitting there blocking the road. We ended up staying at our uncle's house for a while to let things blow over a bit. So I hope they learn their lesson of not messing with people on the road, especially one where it's in a neighborhood full of kids. Luckily, there weren't any kids playing outside that day. But what do you guys think? Were we in the wrong for leaving when they got in an accident? Honestly, it was fully their fault and karma happened to strike them right then and there. You are not at fault in this situation and you are definitely not the jerk. I can't stand when people act like this on the road. They swerve all over the place. They're up in your face and all over your car, honking the horn and being absolutely obnoxious. Not to mention blocking traffic and brake checking you at every glance. That's honestly insane to me and it's just so inappropriate. So good for you for honking your horn. I would have done the same thing. It's not your fault they weren't paying attention. That's completely on them. So hopefully they did learn their lesson. That you know what? If you're going to drive, you need to take it seriously and you need to be safe. Especially in an area where there's a lot of kids. I mean, what were they thinking? Such bad drivers and hopefully some consequences come their way. My fiance became incredibly 
incredibly religious overnight, and honestly, it's making me very uncomfortable. To start off, I have not yet told him that I find his new deeply intense passion for God and religion to be uncomfortable for me, and I know I need to, but I need advice on how to bring it up and what to say to him. My fiance and I have been together for a little over three years now, yet we've known each other since we were both teenagers. He is undeniably my best friend and the sweetest guy to probably ever exist. With him being in the Navy, we've had to deal with a lot of obstacles due to distance, and he is currently serving an eight-month-long period of deployment. He proposed to me back in July, right before he deployed. Ever since I've known him, I've known that he's Christian and that he believes in God. I, on the other hand, believe in God, yet I'm not a very religious person, nor do I believe in a lot of the values that the Bible preaches. I believe that there is a higher power, yet I'm not interested in worshiping, serving, and allowing myself and my choices to be controlled by this higher power. The way I see it, it's my life and I'm my own person, so I should just make my own decisions and choices based on what I think is best for myself and others. That being said, my fiance was the same way, up until about a year ago, that is. He has become very devout, and that has never made me uncomfortable until he suggested that we have his old pastor officiate our wedding in July. My fiance got into contact with his pastor and asked him to officiate our wedding, and the pastor agreed to officiate only if we grow together with Jesus through emails with all three of us and have a Bible study. I wasn't too keen on the idea because I'm not very religious, but I figured perhaps this will be beneficial for our relationship, and it's what my fiance really wanted, so I just went along with it. Well, this pastor began emailing us last week, and I was under the impression that we'd be dealing with growing our relationship together, yet the pastor asked us questions like, what are you looking for from me? Do you have any spiritual questions I can answer? Tell me more about your spiritual journey and so forth, which is fine. I don't mind answering these questions. However, the second email we got from this pastor really bothered me. He wrote my fiance and said, you mentioned in your email, you and your fiance are going to be moving in together once you return from deployment. He then goes on to thanking him for letting him know. He then basically implies that any kind of intimate relationships are designed for husband and wife and that any relations outside of marriage is not part of his plan and would categorize as a sin. He then goes into some really weird detail about that aspect of our lives in a way that really was uncomfortable. And reading that really just made me nauseous. My fiance and I have been intimate ever since we began dating, not only physically, but also emotionally connected. So I found it very strange for him to be asking such specific questions about our relationship, if you know what I mean. I immediately messaged my fiance under the impression that he would feel the same as I do, not interested in anything he's saying and telling him that this is really not his business. However, he messaged me back with a much different response and basically said that he wouldn't be opposed to the idea of waiting until we're married, if you know what I mean. And that just completely and utterly left me in shock. When did he become so religious like this? Now, I've got to preface this by saying it's not the waiting that bothers me the most. It's the fact that all of a sudden, my fiance is letting his own choices and decisions be influenced greatly by religion. I do not want to be one of those couples. And I'm really not trying to offend anybody. This is just my own personal opinion. I was so shocked, I had to respond by saying, are you serious? And he had reassured me that he's not saying yes to the idea, but he's also not saying no to the idea either. I straight up told him I wasn't interested in that kind of relationship. He replied to that with telling me that I should email the pastor my opinion about it. And I know that would just bother me worse. My fiance ended the conversation with the answer that he's still on the fence about it and that he'll email the pastor back with questions, basically talking about that really private subject matter. I do not want to be with someone who's so religious to the point where they make their decisions based on what the Bible preaches to them as well as what other people are telling them. I do not want to be in a marriage where I have to be worried that suddenly he's going to whip out the Bible and start sharing some weird scripture with me. That is not the marriage I want. I do not want a marriage based in strict religion and Bible preaching. I do not want a marriage where he's always looking over my shoulder, saying something along the lines of, oh, God wouldn't want that. It's my body, it's my mind, it's my life, and it's my decisions. And again, I apologize if I offended anyone with the way I see religion. This is honestly just my perspective, but I really am not sure what to do. This is a tricky situation. For one, I think the pastor's being way too intrusive about your personal life. There's a lot of details here that I left out, but needless to say, it was incredibly personal, and it's not something that I think anybody should really be asking about. And I think it's really backwards that your fiancé is more inclined to run things by his pastor first before listening to his future wife. So I don't blame you for being bothered by this. And it honestly 
honestly could be about anything. You said it best. But it's the fact that an outside influence is basically making the decisions instead of your husband and yourself. So hopefully you can have this talk with them and maybe find somebody else to officiate your wedding because this pastor just sounds really creepy. And if I was in your shoes, I definitely would not want him to officiate mine, especially if he's going to be making those kind of weird comments in the email. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.